What's up everybody? Dan here with Dan and Sarah Makers and we are coming back at you with another Tool Tuesday. Thanks for joining us. Um, just a little bit of housekeeping. Subscribe, like, share, comment, all those things that help us out immensely. And we now have an Amazon affiliate link and if you're not sure what that is, down below in the um, description I have some Amazon links that go directly from our page to Amazon where you can get the tools and different things that we show or feature or discuss and use in our channel videos on Amazon. So you click on that link, it takes you to that particular tool. It costs you nothing extra from what Amazon normally sells that item for to purchase off our channel. And it helps our channel out just a little bit. Not much, but a little bit. So if you feel so inclined to purchase one, you have a hardware store that doesn't carry what you want, check out the description. I might have a link for it. So without any further ado, it is really windy. We have a high wind storm watch for tomorrow afternoon and tomorrow night with gusts up to like 60 miles an hour. If that's what's in store for us, I'm kind of scared because already today I've had to cut two trees out that have fallen across the driveway. So hopefully power stays on. Hopefully no trees hit anything important and uh, we'll keep going. So I have searched far and wide on the property to find a good piece of concrete that I can drill some holes into for this video. I don't want to drill holes in our own house foundation or something like that. So um, I found some old piers that had columns from, I think, the original house before it was built or renovated, and they just took them out here in the woods and dropped them off. So this is a big concrete footing, basically, with a CMU column that's been wrapped in some stone. So what are we talking about today? It's Makita. It's their 18-volt line. Um, it is a brushless roto hammer. So this is the X. RH01. It is a cordless SDS shank, or that's the type of shape on the end of the drill bits that fit this roto hammer. It's rated for up to 15 sixteenths of an inch drilling capacity in concrete. Honestly, I don't I don't think I've ever used a 15 sixteenths bit, so you're gonna see three quarters, seven eighths, one inch, but right around that capacity is about where this drill maxes out. So this has, and this is one thing I would recommend, if you are going to get a roto hammer, I would get one that has three selections in its function. I would get it where it drills, it has a hammer drilling function, and then just a hammering function. This particular cordless drill has all three functions. So if I need to do a little bit of light chiseling, chipping, something like that, clean up a concrete wall footing or something like that before I put formwork down for uh, stem walls, that would be where I'd use that light chipping. It's definitely not a heavy chipping hammer. If you're gonna do a lot of chipping, this is not the tool for you. This is just lightweight. So this, the size of it and the type of drill it is, I would recommend it would be good for form work for carpenters drilling quarter inch, 3 16 inch holes into concrete for anchors. I would say also for electricians, HVAC, plumbing technicians, um, and installers where you're drilling into uh, concrete or say the underside of a deck for wedge anchors, expansion anchors, something like that. This would be the ideal tool. It's small, it's compact. In today's world, you don't like running around a job site with a lot of extension cords. So this is a brushless motor. So it has longer lifespan than a brushed motor, uses power more efficiently. So it's kind of a nice system. It's back handle. Um, it's got an adjustable side handle that will rotate around and it kind of has detents to lock it in place so it doesn't slide if you're using the drill. So I'm left-handed so I tend to like to have it over on the right hand side with my left hand on the trigger. Um, we'll drill some holes here. This is a Hilti. It's a T-shaped or cruciform style bit, 3 8 inch shank or drill diameter. For the SDS shank you just push the bit straight in if it's in the correct location, it'll lock into place. If it's not, you just kind of spin it as you're pushing it and it'll lock in place. To take it out of the chuck, you just pull the collar back, pull it straight out. So just push it in. I usually give it a little bit of a shake to make sure it's in there properly. And then you're in business. Like I said, three functions or selections. Drill only. Drill and hammer. And then you have hammer only which would be good for a point or a chisel bit, so it doesn't actually spin the bit. So we'll start out with the drill, hammer drill mode, 3 8 inch. Um, this has a lot of rock in it, so I don't know if we'll hit something big, but 
we'll give it a try here. So that did pretty well. We drilled, I think these bits have about a five and a half, six inch depth of hole. So that drilled pretty quick. I'm happy with that. Um, it's better than hauling a bulldog around or something like that and uh, a cord. So moving on, if you've worked in construction in these last couple of years, you in the United States, let me put it that way, you're, you should be aware of what they call OSHA Table 1. OSHA Table 1 deals with silica dust and silicosis, so uh, respiratory disease that causes lung cancer, kind of like asbestosis. Uh, so silicosis is when you get silica dust from either concrete or rocks or any type of masonry, a silica containing material into your lungs, it causes cancer. So because of that, what I did just now drilling, that is illegal. You can't technically drill a hole without some kind of dust containment system, dust collection system. So this drill, although this was the standard, you know, just slap a bit in drill, this was the go-to for a long time. We now have two options. We have either a hollow drill bit with a vacuum attachment. There's basically um, small holes in the end of this drill bit and it's this is a hollow barrel, almost like a gun barrel or a rifle barrel. And then it's got a vacuum port on the side. This allows me to drill a hole, suck the dust up internally and directly into the vacuum so I can dry drill and not worry about silicosis, dust and then I can be in compliance with OSHA Table 1. These bits are very expensive. Uh, you hit rebar, you toast the bit really fast. So in this particular kit, it comes with a um, add-on vacuum system. So this is the Makita DX01, and this is actually a powered system. It has battery contacts. So when we slip it onto our drill, it makes electrical contact and runs off the battery in the drill itself. So when I turn the drill on and then I turn it off, you'll hear that vacuum is actually running for a couple seconds after the drill stops. I'll do it again. That is sucking air and dust and silica through this collar, which is up against your workpiece and your drill bit goes through a washer grommet in the backside. Sucks the dust through, through this shaft, which is adjustable for depth of drive and then down into a collection container down here with HEPA filters. So you gotta add that HEPA filter to be in compliance with table one. So this is another way of using a conventional roto hammer bit to be in compliance with table one. So we'll slap this same 3 8 inch drill bit in. Um, it doesn't extend past the end of the uh, vacuum when it's in place. This particular length drill bit doesn't but if I want to use, say, a longer, skinnier drill bit like this quarter inch bit, I can't technically use this bit in this vacuum attachment because this much of the bit's going to be free drilling in exposed in an exposed environment without the vacuum working. So technically, I can't use this bit with this tool. I'm sure I'll get a lot of love hate about that, and um, <laughs> I feel you. I, I understand completely. So we'll drill a hole, we'll watch the dust after as we drill, and we'll see that it actually collects the dust. So there'll be a little bit of surface dust, but it won't be airborne like the previous hole. So all the dust, dust is contained down in this container down here. It's clear so you can see how much uh, concrete dust is in there. And there's relatively little dust around the surface of the hole. It's wet so it's caking up a little bit. So it does a very efficient job. If you don't care about table one, but say you're in a critical location like a computer room or an office or something like that where you don't want to put up containment to keep concrete dust from getting all over the place and causing 
major expenses in trying to clean computers or say a dentist's office or something like that where you don't want granules hitting a countertop and getting all over instruments. This would be a good way to go. So I'll remove this um, container here. It's got this button on the side. You just slide it forward and it comes right off. To clear out our dust containment system, we've got a little latch here and it tips forward. And we can empty this out by uh, just opening the back up here. And it will basically expose the horrible silica in the bottom here. And this HEPA, pleated HEPA filter can be changed out as needed. Put it back in, we just slap it in and over. Now, I know there are some cordless roto hammers with attached dust collection systems that run off of the motor's fan. So as the motor's running, it's turning a fan to keep the motor cool. And some companies have used that air current to try and create a suction system. They don't work very well. Um, so this is a nice one where it's actually an electrically di driven motor. Yes, it does draw power from your battery, but you're in compliance and you're not going to face thousands of dollars in fine if a compliance officer walks on site and says, you're violating table one. <laughs> so another fun thing we can do with our roto hammer is chipping. Like I said, if you're going to get one of these, get it with a feature where you can actually chisel or chip lightly because that's one of those things where you run into it every now and again. So I've got it in the hammer mode only. So as you can see, it's not removing huge amounts of concrete. It's not a breaker, rivet buster. It's not a 90 pound air hammer, but it does do okay. You can then put a chisel in. One trick with these chisels is they only go in one way or the other way, 180 degrees opposite each other. So if it doesn't go in the position you want it to, just put it in the drill hammer mode or drill mode and pull the trigger very lightly and rotate it to where you want it. So, as you can see, that's basically just a little bit of light scaling, light chipping. So, it's a very compact unit, honestly. It's close quarters so you can get into fairly tight areas um, and it's rather lightweight so I like it it has a speed of 950 rpms or revolutions per minute and 4100 or sorry 4700 or 4700 impacts per minute so it, it hits pretty quick as you can see with the 3 8 bit it drills pretty quick it chisels okay granted we're up in the woods. This is an old piece of concrete. It may not be the best concrete. It may not be the strongest concrete. So you get into a commercial building where you have um, a four or 5,000 PSI spec for a uh, post-tension slab, it might be a little bit different. It might be a little bit harder. So overall, I really, really like this drill. I haven't had too many opportunities to use it. I've got a Bosch Bulldog. I burned that out and had it rebuilt a couple times. I've got a Hilti. Um, very similar size corded roto hammer to this, and now this is my first cordless roto hammer. So, also, it's the first roto hammer I have with a dust collection system built in. So, just the Makita fanboy thing, <laughs> I like this system because I have lots of batteries for it, and um, just my personal experience, I've had really good luck with Makitas. Um, so, I guess the other thing to say is kind of a word of warning. We're coming into the holiday season and some of the big box stores, they always set up that area at the front of the store. And I'm not just saying this for Makita, I'm saying for any brand. 
they've got a lot of tools that they'll put out there, whether they're impact drivers or circular saws or cordless drills or whatever, um, multi-tools, you know, oscillating multi-tools. They are competing to get the lowest price, sticker price on those tools, and they buy enough from the manufacturers that they get special, specially made versions of a cordless drill or a roto hammer, or sorry, an impact driver or something like that, a common household tool that most people would purchase. They cheapen them up. They put plastic gearing in them instead of metal gearing. They, they do certain things to lower the price point so they can be really competitive and have that entry level tool. Don't, please, if you can at all manage not to, don't buy those Christmas specials. Buy the real tools, like go online, look at the catalog, see what the manufacturer actually makes, whether it's DeWalt, Bosch, Hilti, Makita, whoever. Um, buy one of their real tools that's offered all year long. Don't go for the Christmas time specials. I've personally done it several times over the years, and I've always gotten burned and have a garbage piece of plastic afterwards. So um, that's, that's my two cents. Don't get burned on those Christmas deals, if at all possible. So good drill, really portable. I like it. It's lightweight. And I think as um, doing carpentry and things like that, concrete formwork will be probably the majority of my concrete drilling. Um, it'll really, really come in handy. Really portable, really nice tool to have. So again, remember to like, subscribe, share, comment. Um, those all help our video and our, our channel immensely. Um, whether it's constructive or not, who cares? Uh, if you have advice or opinions, good luck, bad luck with this tool or other tools, leave comments. Other people read the comments. They learn from those comments too. It's not just a, uh, you idiot, you don't know what you're doing, shake your fist at me thing. Um, help other people out if you've got an experience with them. Um, and then, like I said, we've got that Amazon affiliate that does help us out a little bit. Not much, believe me. Um, <laughs> so until next time, this is Dan with Dan and Sarah Makers. Hopefully the wind wasn't too bad. And until next week, have a great one. We hope these videos inspire you to get out there and do something. Bye.